Top news for today, December 14, 2020. Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo says arrest of journalist Lady Ann Salem and others has valid grounds. Dugegarao, which is under MGCQ, may soon return to modified ECQ following a spike on COVID-19 cases. Step to registration for the national ID system is set to resume next month. And Batanes residents keep up their faith by having their confession on wheels. Good day, I am Rom Dufo. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. Our top story, all armed forces of the Philippines personnel are urged to act as human rights officers. AFP Human Rights Office Chief Colonel Joel Alejandro Naknak made the call following the virtual participation of 300 military personnel in the 2020 Human Rights and International Humanitarian Law Summit last Friday. According to Naknak, the AFP shall continue to adhere to human rights, international humanitarian law, and the rule of law. He said all AFP personnel must be aware and informed of various laws so that they can also function as such if needed. Meanwhile, some 81 AFP personnel also joined a bloodletting activity last Saturday at Diliman, Quezon City. The bloodletting drive is part of a week-long celebration of the Human Rights Day observed every 10th day of December. A lawmaker said the arrest of journalist Ann Salem is valid. Aside from Salem, six trade union members were also arrested last week. Salem was arrested for illegal possession of firearms and explosives. Salem's publication, Manila Today, was also tagged by the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict as part of the CPP. According to Senator Bongo, the Philippine National Police has valid grounds and was simply doing its job to maintain peace and order and enforce the law. He said everyone has the right to exercise freedom of speech and criticize the government, but to start a movement that aims to destroy the government is not right and against the law. Senator Sonny Agara says the country should begin to experience better internet connectivity once the first phase of the national broadband program is completed. Angara said under the 4.5 trillion peso general appropriations bill, the budget for the program doubled from the proposed 902 million pesos to 1.9 billion pesos. This is on top of the budget for the implementation of the free Wi-Fi in the public places and in state universities and colleges of the DICT. With bigger investments coming into the country, Angara said it will mean higher paying jobs and more economic activity. Tugagarao City, which is currently placed under a modified GCQ, may return to modified ECQ following the increase in COVID-19 cases. The Regional Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has given the city government until December 20 to manage the hike in COVID-19 cases. The RIATF, headed by DILG Regional Director Jonathan Paul Lucen, suggested a granular or zonal containment strategy in areas with positive cases rather than totally locking up the city. Returning overseas workers would be required to finish the 14-day mandatory quarantine while locally stranded individuals would be asked to present a letter of acceptance. Mayor Soriano asked for a special city council session to work on ordinances including the plan to set aside 25 million pesos for the procurement of vaccines using local funds. A measure seeking to extend the effectivity of Bayanihan to recover as one act or Bayanihan 2 has hurdled the committee level at the House of Representatives. During the last Friday's hearing, the House Committee on Appropriations approved a consolidated bill extending the law's validity from December 19, 2020 until June 30, 2021. According to Speaker Lord Alan Velasco, the proposed extension would allow the government to continue its programs and efforts taken under Bayanihan 2. The bill provides for a stimulus package of 140 billion pesos in regular appropriation and 25 billion pesos as standby funds to cushion the effects of the pandemic and strengthen the efforts in gradually reopening the economy. Still to come, step to registration for the national ID system is set to resume next month and police frontliners will now have their own regular swab tests for COVID-19. 
More on these from the PNA Newsroom continues. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Hanggat maaari, umiwas sa mataong lugar. Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig. Maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay. Takpan ang ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing. Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng coronavirus disease gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon. Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan ito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The PSA will start the second step of its nationwide registration for the Philippine Identification System or PhilSees next month, January 4, 2021. PSA Undersecretary Dennis Mapa said the registration will start on a gradual and small scale basis. Step 2 registration refers to the validation of supporting documents and capturing of biometric information at registration centers. MAPA said scheduling appointments for Step 2 will be adopted as part of health and safety measures against COVID-19. He also said the PSA has already coordinated with partner local government units in informing Step 1 registrants about the Step 2 schedule. To protect police personnel and their families against COVID-19, the Philippine National Police will have regular swab tests conducted for its frontliners. PNP Deputy Chief for Administration Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliazar said police officers in Metro Manila are the priority in the conduct of frequent RT-PCR tests. Eliazar says the regular swab tests would help the PNP sustain its operation while waiting for the vaccine. Latest PNP data showed a total of 8,505 policemen have already been infected with COVID-19 with 27 reported deaths. 8,010 of them have recovered from the disease. Eight persons were rescued on Sunday during a flash flood that affected low-lying villages in Apayao. According to the Municipal Government Unit of Puddol, incessant heavy rains since Saturday night caused sudden flooding in barangays Kabatakan, San Mariano, Alem, and Imelda. Two residents from Kabatakan and one from Imelda who were checking on their farm animals got stranded on their other side of Maluno River when it suddenly swelled. Search and rescue team immediately proceeded to the area with their motorized rubber boats. Residents said they are thankful for the swift action of the responders who were armed with life-saving equipment. The government continues to reach out to workers in need amid the pandemic through the Labor Department's CAMP and TUPAD programs. More on this from Chris Crismundo. The Department of Labor and Employment allocated 45 million pesos in financial assistance for the Bawenos whose jobs were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte disclosed that 15 million pesos has already been downloaded to Dolid Region 11 under the Tulong Panghanap Buhay sa ating Displace Disadvantaged Workers Program or TUPAD. 30 million pesos will also be allotted for the Dole Emergency Employment Program in the city. Qualified applicants will work for 15 days and receive a salary of 6,000 pesos each. 
At least 417 tourism industry workers displaced by the pandemic in Zamboanga City are also set to receive financial aid from the government. Each beneficiary would receive 5,000 pesos of financial assistance under the Dolles COVID-19 Adjustment Measure Program or CAMP. Identified recipients are displaced workers of DOT-accredited primary and secondary tourism enterprises, including workers of tourism establishments, travel and tours, transport operators, tour guides, and other tourism frontline services. Meanwhile, Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestre Bello III on Friday led the distribution of Tupad cash aid to about 1,200 beneficiaries in Baguio City. Bello said the nationwide deadline for the release of the cash aid to beneficiaries of the Tupad program was extended to December 15, 2020. The agency is also implementing the release of funds to aid the overseas Filipino workers affected by the virus. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo. In business, some 55 micro-entrepreneurs in Valenzuela have received gift checks worth 8,000 pesos each from the city government to help them revive and start anew their livelihood amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Apart from cash assistance, the beneficiaries will also undergo training and seminars under the Pangkabuhayan sa Pagbangon at Ginhawa program. The city's Local Economic and Investment Promotions Office, or LEPO, in partnership with the Department of Trade and Industry, targets to aid entrepreneurs whose businesses were forced to close due to the health crisis. The city government said more programs and activities will be conducted to help them overcome the pandemic. It urged residents to contact the LEPO for more questions about Valenzuela's various programs during the pandemic. Up next, former rebels belie claims of torture and maltreatment in the hands of government forces. Meanwhile, Batanes residents keep up their faith by having their confession on wheels. The PNA News returns after these reminders. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon, at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng coronavirus disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, Takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Former members of the CPP NPA belied claims that government forces tortured and maltreated former rebels who went back to the fold of the law. During the pros and cons television show on Sunday, Ivelyn Corpin, alias Ka Ivy, said government security forces are sincere in their commitment to achieving lasting peace. Corpin added, surrenderers are actually getting various benefits from the government when they decide to quit the armed struggle. 
Ray Christian Sabado, alias Chan Chan, also a former NPA rebel, said the communist group is maneuvering the mindset of the youth to recruit more members. The former NPA members urged various activists to withdraw their support to the alleged legal front organizations of the CPP, NPA, and DF. Sabado urged students who are still part of the NPA's legal front groups not to waste their skills, talents, and intellects by engaging themselves with a communist insurgency. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, says local government units are not stupid to support the godless and obsolete ideology of communist terrorist groups. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año says LGUs enjoy local autonomy and are fed up with the CPP, NPA, NDF and its violence and atrocities. He said LGUs are aware of the harassment and extortion activities on businesses as well as ambuscades and raids on government forces. The DALG chief also emphasized that LGUs received more budget this year through the Bayanihan to Heal as One Law and Bayanihan to Recover as One Law. And you answered allegations by the Communist Party of the Philippines that LGUs are being forced to declare the CPP, NPA, and DF as persona non grata by threatening to withhold the LGU's budget. About 1,500 LGUs have declared the CPP, NPA, and DF persona non grata in their localities. In our foreign news, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Saturday called for a worldwide state of climate emergency to tackle global warming. In the Climate Ambition Summit, Guterres said five years after the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, the world has yet to limit temperature rise to as close to 1.5 degrees Celsius as possible. He cited that carbon dioxide levels are at record highs, making temperatures 1.2 degrees hotter than before the Industrial Revolution. Gutierrez called on all leaders worldwide to declare a state of climate emergency in their countries until carbon neutrality is reached. Some 38 countries have already done so, recognizing the urgency and the stakes. An armored personnel carrier became the talk of the town as it acted as the bridal car for the future wives of six soldiers in Lano del Norte. The so-called wedding tank was a 39 million peso vehicle which helped significantly in the liberation of Marawi. Instead of weapons, the APC was decorated with white flowers and ferns as it carried the brides of six soldiers of the 4th Mechanized Infantry Battalion. Battalion Commander Lieutenant Colonel Domingo Dulay Jr. said the unit decided to hold the wedding for the troops who had been living together with their partners. In his message to the newlyweds, Dulay wished the couples a strong marriage that would endure all kinds of temptations and challenges like the APC went, which went through trying times. In Batanes, a priest is keeping the faith of his parishioners alive by using his tricycle as a confession booth on wheels. Father Ronaldo Manabat, the parish priest of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Basco, drives his mobile compisalan around to bring the sacrament to, of penance to the people's doorsteps amid the pandemic. Parishioners who go to confession are still required to wear face masks and shields as well as observe physical distancing. Manabat said his target are the youth and senior citizens whose mobility are restricted during the community quarantine. Last December 8, he personally took the confession of children who then had their first communion in time for the Feast of Our Lady of Immaculate Conception. The activity will go on until the Advent season. Take one more look at today's biggest stories. Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo says arrest of journalist Lady Ann Salem and others has valid grounds. Tugegarao, which is under MGCQ, may soon return to modified ECQ following a spike on COVID-19 cases. Step to registration for the national ID system is set to resume next month. And Batanes residents keep up their faith by having their confession on wheels.
Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, check our webpage or check the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. It's 10 days to go before Christmas and that's your biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I'm Rom Dufo. Good day.